Hey everybody, it's good to see you back again. So I've spent most of this morning marking out all of the holes that I need to drill in the pan. Now we can use the beer can pan for some help because we still have a clean accurate hole where the bell housing drain plug is, another clean accurate hole where the transmission drain plug is, but the engine oil drain plug hole has been obliterated because they've torched it out bigger because they were beating this thing up so bad. I think it actually moved and they couldn't access it anymore. So we're gonna have to figure that one out as well as the six oblong holes that are underneath the main and equalizer springs. That's always a weak point on these pans. You can see this one has cracked completely through right there and they just finally torched all those out, added this other piece of metal there. So it's no good for that. We also have a coolant drain hole here that's been torched way larger than what it should be. So yeah, this is only good up to a point. Also the two attachment point um, holes back here where it attaches to that drawbar bracket up underneath the final drives They've been egged out quite badly as well. So we have a little bit of information here But a lot more figuring out left to do Back in the shop now. I'll show you what I did to figure out the two rearmost Attaching holes so you can see we have cap screw quantity two spacer quantity two. That's right The pan is lower than the drawbar bracket that those bolts go into so we need to figure out not only bolt spacing But spacer height for that as well. So last time I had the pan down I cut two pieces of if I can get you guys in here to see there we are half inch by 13 threaded rod. One right there, one over in the other attaching hole. So I ran those all the way up as far as I could get them into the threaded holes, put the pan back in, and then threaded each one down just until it touched the pan. Then I traced out around the, uh, the base of each one. That gives me absolutely accurate placement for where I need to drill those holes. And now when I take the pan down again, however much threaded rod is sticking out, gives me an accurate um, length for the spacer that I need to make for each one of those points. So that was actually fairly easy. Next, to locate the hole for the engine oil drain plug. So, get you in here once again. You can see I've got an old drain plug laying on the pan and I have a piece of thin cardboard paper cut perfectly square standing up next to it. That's a transfer method I used for that. And I also did it to the bell housing drain, which is right here. You can see I still have the piece of cardboard standing up next to that, as well as the transmission drain plug, which is over there. I think you can see the circle that I marked in the pan. So you take a perfectly square piece of paper, lay that drain plug in the bottom of the pan, and then run that piece of paper in until the top corner touches the edge of the plug that's in the machine and then align the drain plug with the bottom corner that's on the pan. Hit that in about three or four different locations all the way around. You've perfectly located that drain plug on the pan beneath the plug that's still in the machine. At that point, I just took the marker, traced out around the plug. You have accurate locations for those three holes. So again, that wasn't too bad. And now for the holes that need to go beneath the main and equalizer springs, you can see for now, I've just taken a marker and traced out kind of around the corners of the equalizer spring and pins and links and everything where they are closest to the pan. That's just going to give me a rough idea where everything is landing once I take this pan out from underneath the tractor. And because the beer can pan out back has been completely cut away in that area, that's of no use to us. But the pan that's underneath my 5U7066, the Iron Mistress, that still has all those holes in place. So we're going to have to get under that, tap out a pattern. Hey, little cat 10. I should really start you up one of these days, too. So, all right. Railroad lantern, don't fail me now. Oh, my tape's trying to run away. Okay. Let's do this. Y'all might be asking yourselves why not just start this up and drive it outside. Oh, come on. There we go where everything is more accessible. Well, to nutshell it, because fire and water. The water part is because it's raining outside today, so that'd be kind of a pain. The fire part goes back to the last time I actually ran this D2, 
was out on the field doing the field work. And I don't remember if that was on a behind the scenes or if that was field work episode. I, th I think it was field work episode anyway. A squirrel had built a nest up on top of the starting engine. There's where there's our target right there. And had some leaves and some dry grass up there. And I didn't realize it at first because it had sat out there for a few weeks since I last had it going. So got the starting engine running and smelled some smoke and then saw some smoke. And then after I realized, yeah, it's gonna be perfect size. After I realized what was going on, figured, well, I can get this started before there's any fire. Then I saw some fire. <laughs> it turns out I was wrong. <laughs> so, yeah, we got it put out. I had to grab a nearby stick and um, pull the, the flammable material out, and it didn't hurt anything. The fire was soon out, but it still made me pucker a bit. So, yeah, I'm pretty sure that was a fieldwork episode. I know not everybody watches those, but if you caught it, yeah, we do have fun times out there. This is relatively clean under here. I'm hoping this tape sticks. taped in place so the whole moral of the story we just told well it's because I don't feel like taking the hood off this thing and cleaning the rest of that old nest out of there to start it up again anyhow so we'll just tap it out from where we're at it'll be fine and back in the shop once again so here is the finished template that we just tapped out and looking at the placement of the holes, this is correct. So the two large holes in the center only have a one inch wide strip of material between them. But the smaller holes on each end have a full inch and a half worth of space between those. That is correct too. And you can even back it up. I did some research online. Here's a picture I got from the uh, Antique Caterpillar Machinery Owners Club site. That's a D2 pan if we blow it up. I think you can see from the picture, yeah, those outer holes are a little bit further apart than the inner ones. So blow it up even more. You can tell there's a definite difference in the width between all of those. And the reason why they put those six slotted holes in here, once we get it in final position, it affords access to the U-bolt nuts for the mainspring and further in, for that smaller equalizer spring. So you can service all of that from beneath the tractor without having to remove the pan if you have to. And we located also while we were down there, the inch and a quarter diameter coolant drain hole that is directly beneath the drain tap. And I also got the front edges marked where I'm going to finish both of those top corners off. So I believe that's all the marking we had to do. We can take this back out, start drilling holes. And just finished transferring the templates onto the pan. So we have all of the mainspring access slots marked out. We're ready to go there. So the rear mounting holes are marked out and center punched, as well as the transmission drain plug hole, bell housing drain plug hole, engine oil drain plug hole. I have center punched out the bolt pattern for the front tow hook, as well as that inch and a quarter coolant drain hole up there on the side. So. For the early first generation style pan, that's all we have to do. Some of the later ones had like a slotted hole here. That's not applicable on this. And the more keen observers to the channel will have undoubtedly noticed that when we were crawling underneath my 5U to mark out that slotted pattern, that pan had a lot of other slots and holes and what have you cut in it back here. None of that stuff is original. None of that was supposed to be there. That was from people in the past just trying to make access to work on components beneath the machine without having to take the pan off. So 
as we've done up to this point, we're just trying to do an accurate recreation of what this first generation pan once was. So let's start with the easy ones. We'll pop out both of these holes back here. Another person did ask all of the half inch mounting holes for this pan. They asked if I'm oversizing the holes and yes, I'm actually going full 9 16 on all of the bolt holes that take half inch bolts. That just helps you fit everything a lot better. So we're also going 9 16 for both of those half inch bolts back there. And with that, we have the two back mounting holes done. Of course, we started out with an eighth inch pilot and then we stepped up gradually until we hit 9 16 so That's the easiest way to do it, keep them on center. So as long as I had the eighth pilot in the drill, I went ahead and got the pilot hole established for the three drain plug holes. Those need to be three and one quarter inches and I'm gonna use a bimetallic hole saw to pop those out. When you get up to these larger sizes, Cutting oil is your friend. Don't be afraid to use a lot of it. Okay, everybody, obviously it's a while later. I got going with the whole size and just, get, I didn't want to stop. So I did stop soon enough to show y'all what I've been up to. So we went ahead and started putting in all of the different slots for beneath the main spring. And this was pretty much all done with an inch and three quarter hole saw because that is what matched the rounded edges of all those slots perfectly. So what I did for these shorter ones, you can see I left this one unfinished right here. I basically cut a hole on pretty much a two thirds overlap of another hole. You can see the blanks right here and it's tricky, but it can be done. Like this one even came out in one piece. So two guide holes for centers and two round holes just overlapping each other. And if you work the hole saw down incrementally, you just cut a little on one, cut a little on the other, get them both pretty much to the bottom. By the time you can rip one of them out, it pretty much takes the other one with it. Sometimes you have to go back and crack off the other half moon shaped piece, but that works pretty well for those. And then I just go back with a file, just takes a couple minutes, just kind of flatten those nubs and you're left with a perfectly oval slot. So for the longer ones, I took that same inch and three quarter saw and I just cut a hole on each end, like you can see there, and then just took the grinder and carefully slit the edges between the holes. Then once you do that, you can just peel the center section out. Once again, clean those up with a file real quick. You're good to go. So I'm gonna get busy on that. Don't need to show you all that process. It's pretty straightforward. Long as I was at it, I also got the four holes drilled for the front tow hook, as well as that inch and a quarter hole for the coolant drain. So. A lot of people are asking if more brace work needs to be added for the tow hook. And no, that's what these pieces, these cross braces are that we welded in. You can see it's a double layer of steel that goes through the quarter inch pan and then through the quarter inch pieces of steel. And you're right up against like the most solid 
portion of the whole guard where it mounts to that radiator support you can rip you can pull on this thing all day it's not going to rip that hook off so it's actually a pretty stout portion of the pan so we'll finish cleaning those up and we'll do a side-by-side -side comparison with that really junky one outside okay it's finally time for the big reveal yeah you can see a lot of similarities, but a lot of differences between the original and the new. We went from spent to mint, just like that. So, yeah, and this is not just a reasonable copy. This is as close to exact as I can possibly get it. That's my 100% effort right there. So, yeah, you can see how, again, the old beer can pan was just beat right in, laid right down. They had to torch all the openings. Um, a lot of the holes didn't line up, so they just made more room and then added more metal and cracks and worn out holes and just lots of damage overall. But we replicated all the contours. We got all the spacing proper. We have all the correct mounting holes. We have correct placement for all of the drain hole openings. That's what that area once was right there. But yeah, it's easy to see now where or why these always crack out through this midsection right here. It's the weakest point of the whole pan. Not only did they cut each side down for main spring, spring clearance, but they put all kinds of holes in it. So they just weakened that thing every which way they could. And then, yeah, both the other pans I have here, they've both been welded and cracked completely in half all the way through that area. So that's just a weak spot. But what, like so many other first generation components on this, we're just going back to original spec, even though there may be some shortcomings. Like this one, it's been pointed out that they've added a little bit of reinforcement metal on each side. And of course, that was part of their repairs. I'm not going to do that on this because it didn't originally have it. But if I was going to go out and work this poor tractor like the beer can cat got worked, yeah, I'd certainly be probably reinforcing this somewhat. I may not have even put these holes in here. You know, it's just one of those things. But overall, very happy with how it turned out. I'm liking it. Quite the difference between the two. Another common question I've got is, wouldn't it have been easier to just knock this one, bang this one back in shape, hammer it back flat, and then use it again? Anyone who's ever worked metal will tell you no. Um, this was a lot of work making this new one, but it was still less work than trying to take all this bashed up, bent, and now stretched metal of this pan to try and return it to proper shape. Because the way this area got so caved in right here, that metal had to stretch to form an arc. It used to be flat, but you know, an arc has more overall distance. So you can't just hammer that flat because the whole centerpiece here is bigger than the area that it needs to reside in. And it's gonna load things and cause you more problems and then trying to get everything straight. And yeah, uh, you still wouldn't have had as good of a pan with as good of a fit by repairing that old one as you will with this new one that we just made. Just replace that all together. That's scrap iron at this point, so. All right, that's it for the pan itself. We have one more item though. Before you get too excited, these are not the bolts I'm planning on using. They're just temporary for now. And while we're under here, I should point out, I did get the spacers made for the rear mounting. They ended up needing to be two inches right on the dot. I've got that one in place, roughly where it needs to be. We don't have the bolts in yet, but yeah, those turned out well. And as we go up the line, drain plug. Drain plug, go a little farther still, there's all of the U-bolt nuts, easily accessible for the mainspring, equalizer spring they cut the slots for. And finally, drain plug. They all line up well. And finally, we get to see the front tow hook. Fits just like it should. A couple people have asked if it is supposed to face forward like that and yes indeed that is the correct mounting for that piece and you can see it curls back well enough to keep whatever you put in there contained so that it doesn't want to slip out even if the machine ends up being nose down quite a ways that's still 
plenty adequate. So yeah, if you turned it around, it would not only be too far down, but it'd be too far back as well. So these front corners finished off well. That was the final detail. Very happy with it. And real quick, I wanna go back into the D2 and R2 photo archive book. I love this, it's such a handy source of information. And you can see on this D2 right here, it is a near identical looking belly pan with front toe hook sticking out and forward. So I'd say we replicated that to a T. Also note the curved front bumper. That is another piece that I would very much like to have on this tractor, not just for the bumper aspect of it. We don't need that big grill guard. That's um, not necessary in this case, but I like those rounded front bumpers, but even more so the side iron brackets that facilitate those really go a long way toward protecting the side of the engine and radiator from the tracks or from foreign objects that the tracks will bring around, even more so with those super wide track pads that are going to be on this tractor. So that's probably the main reason I'd like that extra support that piggybacks on the outside of the side panels here, that extra protection in case we do run a track or have anything happen like that. So that being said, I would really love to see if anyone has a D2 of any era, any vintage that has a front bumper on it like that, or even brackets or remnants. Um, I would really like to get some dimensions if I could. Pictures would be great uh, because I only have that one photo in that book along with the generic like side views and the parts manuals and there's still a lot of gray areas as to exactly how a couple of those mounting brackets really kind of bolt up. So if anyone could help out with that, it would be greatly appreciated. So this belly pan was kind of a really fun build. It was a lot of work, but I did enjoy it and I'm really happy to be able to use that tail hook. So thanks again for watching everyone. And yeah, we'll continue on.